Hi everybody, Harris here with iDownloadBlog and today we're taking a look at the brand new 24 inch M1 iMac coming in in beautiful colors and a new design. This is going to be one of the most important iMacs in years. So we're going to take a look at the basic instructions on how to set it up and some more advanced tips and tricks to really get the most out of this computer for your usage. So starting off with the packaging, it's a huge box and once you peel off the tab, you're going to turn the box upside down and lift it up like a shoe box and then you pull the tabs on the side and you can bring out the iMac itself in all of its glory. Keep in mind, this is under 10 pounds. It is very, very light, so it's very easy to take it off. But be careful, because it is so light, if you take it off and put it on a table that's not sturdy, it could fall off. So just be careful with that. So starting out in the packaging, we get a lot of goodies. So of course, we get Apple's new keyboard. This is their Magic Keyboard which they've been iterating over the past few years. Now, if you get the more expensive version of the iMac, you're gonna be able to get a Touch ID sensor and the power button, but this is just the normal one, and it's got your standard key layout. It's very, very light, which is very interesting. Super duper light. It charges with a lightning cable, which we'll see later. It's color matching to your computer, and it's great. Then we get the power supply. So there's two parts to this. There's the power block, which is going to go to your computer, and then there's the cable that'll actually go into the wall. Two pieces, so it makes traveling a little bit easier if you can take them apart, put them in different bags, whatever. Next, we have an awesome lightning cable, and this is the first time Apple's ever sold these colorful braided Apple cables. So this will be able to charge your iPhone or one of your older iPads, but of course, also your mouse and your keyboard. And then we have the magic mouse, unless you opted to get the trackpad instead, which is an option that you can do when you check out with this Mac for an extra $50 on the website. So if you get the magic mouse, it is again color matched to your computer, and it looks pretty cool. I'm not personally a fan of this mouse, but some people may be. And then last, but most certainly not least of the packaging, you get your color matching pamphlet as well as Apple stickers. So you get both the bolder color of the back of the computer as well as the lighter pastel version that you're going to see on the chin and the front of the computer that also kind of matches the accessories. These are sweet. So then we're gonna go ahead and take off the diaper from the iMac. There's there's a lot of packaging and a lot of protection here, uh, and it's actually really satisfying to take off. Apple always does a great job with that. You have your screen protector, you have the protector around the sides, on the back, everywhere. Some nice frosted plastic to keep your device clean when it's shipping. And then once you are ready, you just plug in the power cable to the back of the iMac and it'll magnetically attach. Then hold down the power button to the back left of the device if you're looking at the screen and then you're going to be able to go ahead and start setting up your computer. So when you're taking a look at the computer itself, up top we have the camera as well as the microphone. Tilting it to the left, we do have our headphone jack right here, which means you can attach your standard headphones right into there. And then if we turn it the other direction, there is nothing on this side, no SD card or anything like that. And on the very back, of course, you have your power connector. Here we have two Thunderbolt USB-C ports, which means that you can use that lightning cable with your computer to plug it in there. And you can charge up your mouse and your keyboard just like that when it's running low. And then if you get the more expensive model, you'll have two more USB-C 4 ports here, but just two on this. So getting started, of course you have Apple's own keyboard and mouse. Now I'm not personally a fan of this mouse at all, so I'm more likely to opt for something like this from Logitech. This is their Master 2S, but I also have their Master 3, which I absolutely love. And this is just more comfortable. There's more customization and more controls and more buttons. So you can always change out the Magic Mouse for a better mouse, um, depending on what your preference is. But I really like the ergonomics of this much better than the flat design of this mouse. So you can always sell this on eBay for, you know, like 70 bucks or 60 bucks, whatever it is, and then use that money to buy a little bit of a better mouse. But this is also really portable, which is nice. Then of course, Apple's keyboard is great, but maybe you want to sell this for, you know, 80, 70 bucks and then buy a cheaper third-party one. And there's a lot of great options for third-party keyboards. If you wanna go really cheap and just save a bunch of money, you can get something like this for $20. It's not fantastic, but it does work and you could, you know, make a little bit of money by selling the keyboard. I have one here from Sateki. It's pretty nice. It's got a good clean design. 
and then you have your number pad to the left and you can connect three devices to it or Logitech has their MX keys which is fantastic and I use that at school or I covered the Keychron K2 2.0 last year which is a really nice mechanical keyboard. These are all great options if you don't want to use Apple's or maybe you're looking for something a little bit clickier or that you can pair to multiple devices or something cheaper. There's a lot of different options if you don't want to use Apple's keyboard. But I would personally definitely recommend something like the Logitech MX Master. I just think it's just a much better mouse. Now in terms of storage, of course, you know how much storage you have when you bought this computer because you selected that option. But if you want to find out more about your storage, you go up to the top left where the Apple logo is, click about this Mac, and then you go into storage and you'll see how much storage is available and how much is used. So the 256 gig model of the computer has 245 gigabytes of actual space that's not used by the operating system. And of that, there's 215 remaining. So right out of the box, a fresh install, this computer only has about 215 gigabytes of storage. And then if you wanna see further what's using your storage, you can click manage right here. So here you can see iMovie that comes pre-installed is two and a half gigabytes, GarageBand is a gigabyte. So if you wanna free up some space right away, you can delete these and then your system and other use about 20 gigabytes. So like I said, the 256 gigabyte iMac really comes with about 216 gigabytes available out of the box setting this up as new. So that's not fantastic. Now, if you're looking to add storage to your computer, one of the best ways to do that is with external USB-C SSDs. Now, I have a few USB-C drives here and I've made a video comparing all the top USB-C SSDs on the market. So you can check that link if you wanna view that comparison. But basically these are very fast, very small, and very secure ways of adding storage to your computer. You would just use a USB-C cable and attach these to the back of your Mac and then you could have a little bit of storage and there's different accessories that can allow you to mount this to the back of your iMac. You could get Velcro or anything like that and just have the storage here. And this is very fast storage, so it's gonna be a lot faster than your typical hard drive because it's an SSD, which means there's no moving parts, there's no spinning parts inside of here, like a typical hard drive disk. So this is going to be very fast and very reliable. And this way, if you wanna take this off of your computer and move it to a different computer, you can do that. So I personally edit all of my videos off of SSDs like this, so that way I can move it from one computer to another, like my MacBook Air. Now, speaking of USB-C, because there are only two Thunderbolt ports on the back of here you may want to get a hub now this is just one option this is the one I have it has a VGA and HDMI SD micro SD card option Ethernet headphone jack and then four USB so I can just plug this to the back of my iMac and I'd be good to go. But there's a bunch of other USB-C hubs that you can also get if you're looking for a different combination of ports. But this is going to be very helpful for allowing you to expand what you can connect to your computer. And if you want just a simple USB-C to USB-A connector, you can get something small like this, which will plug directly into the back of your iMac and give you basically a permanent USB-A port here for connecting something like an older mouse or a microphone or something like that. So that's always an option as well. So by default with this mouse, if you wanna pull up the right click, you have to do a control click and that'll pull up those options. But if you go into your mouse settings and you can always get to preferences by going to the Apple logo, system preferences. And if you go down to mouse over here, you can add a secondary click by clicking this little toggle. And now you can click on the right hand of your mouse and it'll pull up the right click. So if you wanna change your background, for instance, you go to your homepage or your desktop and then you right click and choose change desktop background. And you'll be able to browse through Apple's own selection. And you can see that dynamic wallpapers, such as the ones that are up top, these will actually change in their color uh, based off the time of the day. So as the day goes on, it'll get darker to reflect it as if this was actually in front of you, which is really cool. So at night, this will be a dark image. Um, during the day, it's gonna be brighter with lighter, bluer skies, stuff like that. So it's a really great option. And then you can scroll through Apple's wallpapers and choose whatever you want. Now, one of my favorite settings to change is hot corners. So if you go into system preferences and you type in hot corners, you see it's under desktop and screensaver, and then you go over to screensaver, and then you go to hot corners down here, and you click that, and you have four hot corners on your device on each corner, and you can choose what these do. So for me, I like to turn on desktop for the top right-hand corner. So desktop, and then I'll click OK. So now when I drag my mouse to the top right-hand corner, which I'll do right now, it'll clear off anything that's on my display and quickly give me my 
cleared desktop, which I think is really great. But if you wanted to change this or add something else, you could also do that. So you could do lock screen by going to the bottom right. So say you're leaving your room or your office or whatever, you just go down to the bottom right and boom, your display is now locked and then you'll just have to enter your passcode when you get back. Of course, there is a lock button on your keyboard too, but in case you're using a different keyboard or whatever the circumstances may be. Now you also have your screensavers, which I think most people actually kind of sleep on the screensavers. They're really cool. So I'm gonna do shell and then I'm going to turn on hot corners, bottom left, start screensaver and click okay. And then if I just want some nice background images, I can go to the bottom left corner and it will start the screensaver, which looks really cool. Okay, next, if you go up to the top right-hand corner and you click the little small icon, you're gonna see your control center, which is very similar to an iPad or an iPhone's control center. So if there's something here that you like, such as do not disturb, you can drag that to your menu bar, and then you have that there for quick access no matter where you are. So same thing if I wanted screen sharing up here or display brightness, I can drag all these up and then they just live here. Now, if I want to remove any of these, I just hold it in here, give it a little kind of half hold, and it will take it off. So again, we'll do the screen mirroring, hold it, and then it disappears from there. Display disappears. But I do like Do Not Disturb up there and display. Now, one of my favorite toggles is right here, this music or now playing. So if you drag it up here, it's gonna give you all of the media that's playing on your device. So that way, if you're not sure where a sound is coming from on your Mac, you click this and you can quickly mute any audio or play and pause certain audio. So I'll give you an example right now. I'll go ahead and start playing this video and it'll be right here. And if I go up into the media, you can see that that popped up here. And then I'll play some music from Apple Music. And you can see now I have music as well as YouTube. And then we'll just do one more. So then if I start playing one of my favorite TV shows, Psych, it'll pop up with all three. So I have music, I have Psych right here, and then I have YouTube here, and I can easily play or pause any of these very quickly. So this is a really fantastic way of controlling your media. Now, if you have an iPad, you can utilize a really sweet feature called Sidecar, which is not new, but it's really great. So if you go into your control center and you do display, and then you can go ahead and connect a device to your iPad, and so I'll click my iPad, and you can see it has transformed my iPad over here into a second display. So I can actually drag this over to my iPad, which is really awesome. And if I go over and go into displays, I can rearrange this so that this iPad's over here so that it knows that I'm dragging from the right to the left. And if you wanna customize any more settings, you can go to sidecar and you have some options here. So this is really great and a really powerful way to extend your desktop if you just want a little bit more space to work with. Now on your keyboard, you have a little glow button on the bottom and by default with macOS Catalina, if you press that button, it's going to pull up your emoji drawer, which is great. And you can search through emoji right there, but you can also customize this in your preferences. If you go under keyboard, you can find that the glow button you can change to change input, so if you wanna change your language, if you have like a Spanish and an English keyboard or something like that, or you can do dictation. So if you wanna customize what this button does, you can do that in your settings. Now there's three great settings that you can also get to from the keyboard. So if you hold down option and brightness, it'll take you to your display settings very quickly. If you hold down option and mission control, it'll give you your mission control options right away. And finally, if you do option and volume, it'll launch your sound preferences right away. Now a, really great now, a really great part of this computer is that it does have studio quality microphones. So if you ever want to record a podcast or anything like that, of course, you can always plug into a microphone like this that I'm using right here. But you can also launch voice memos and just record right to your computer because it does have really good audio. So it's going to ask for a bunch of permissions including iCloud syncing so that all my voice memos show up everywhere. But if I click record and I start recording something and blah, 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 blah. And then I can finish it and I can listen to it. And I start recording something and blah, 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 blah. And then I can finish it. And it actually sounds super good on the speakers on this. And then if you right click it, you can click share and you can airdrop it or message it to someone. So this is a great way of getting really quick sound bites um, and any other recordings that you need with a really good microphone. Now there's an application called Photo Booth on here. So if you wanna snag a quick picture, uh, you can do that. So here I am, and you can also record video if you want. And then you can also turn on effects, which is pretty cool. So we'll do chipmunk or blockhead, kinda of like an alien. 
Now finally, one of my favorite quick settings on any Mac is Command, Shift, 3, 4, and 5. So Command, Shift, 3 will take a screenshot of your entire device and it'll pop up in the bottom right hand corner and you can right click that and you can save it to your desktop to your documents folder or you can save it to your clipboard so you can basically copy it and then you can paste it somewhere else or you can open it in mail preview or photos you can have it show in finder or if you click the markup option you can go ahead and edit it with all these tools up here but then instead of command shift 3 you can do command shift 4 and this will give you the ability to screenshot exactly a segment that you want say i wanted to screenshot this frame of my video i can do command shift 4 and then i can drag and will screenshot just that portion and I can click on it and edit it to whatever I want. Finally, if you do command shift plus five, this will give you screen recording options and you can drag what segment you want to record or you can click this option which is record entire screen and then you can choose what microphone you want. So you can do none if you don't want any audio or you can do iMac microphone here if you do wanna record audio and then you go ahead and click record and it'll be recording. And when you're done, you do command shift five again, click the stop button the video will pop up over here and then you can trim it if you want to down here click done and it should save and then you see it's on my desktop right here and then if i click the space bar i can get a quick preview of this and you can hear the audio that came through that and then last but not least if you go over to idownloadblog.com you're going to be able to see a our new website which is just redesigned but you can also see an awesome section for wallpapers so if you want some really awesome wallpapers go ahead and go to here and you can choose what you want so i'll say city wallpapers and you can see there's some really great wallpapers available here and there's always super good wallpapers being added all the time so you can add those and then if you're using safari you can directly use image as desktop picture or you can just save your image and add it to your desktop later so those are some tips and tricks for the new iMac let me know what you think and if you have any questions for how to use it or anything like that thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video